Hey guys, welcome to Chaos Theory. My name is Nicholas Birio. Um, and in this video, we're going to be looking at this Sonos Play One speaker and the modeling part of it, or at least the beginning of the modeling part of it. Um, I realized that last time I had, didn't have this um, Scene Explorer on. That's my bad. It's probably on for you by default. If not, go to Tools, press Scene Explorer, um, and then just drag it to the side so it opens up over here. Um, and also, if your uh, command bar over here isn't um, the same size, you can just take a hold on the sides here and make it larger. Great. So, to begin modeling this, we need to understand that we don't need to do all of the work. We just need to put in a few edges uh, to help our TurboSmooth modifier, which is what we're going to use for this in this instance, um, to keep some boundaries and have some control edges on where to round certain edges. So to do this, we need to convert our object to an edible poly. After that, we can go to edges. We can do this by going uh, one on the keyboard for vertex, two for edges, three for border, four for polygon, and five for element. If you press the same key again, so one for vertex, I press one again, it'll go out of your vertex selection and thus, you know, not keeping a selection going on your object when you uh, put on more modifiers. I'll explain that a little bit later when it makes more sense. So the first, first thing I'm going to do is take a look at this object and what I want to do. And I think I'm gonna do these rounded edges first on the corners. So I'll go to edge and press F4 so that you can see your edges uh, here on the object. Press Alt R for ring select and then use chamfer settings. Um, if you have a hotkey for this uh, already, that's fine. You can use your hotkey. Uh, I will at some point in this tutorial, but I'll keep telling you what options I'm using. With chamfer, we can split your, our edges into multiple edges. So increase the edge chamfer amount. This is also, by the way, called a bevel in other 3D softwares like Blender and Maya, as far as I remember. Um, but here in 3ds Max, it's a chamfer. Press OK to this uh, when we're happy with the results. And again, I'm not trying to create the same roundness. I'm going to rely on my Turbo Smooth modifier. So if you go to the modifier list, press T and find turbo smooth. I'm gonna rely on the roundness of what that'll do. Right now, it looks very bad. Um, and that's because of the polygons on the top. Um, so this polygon here and this polygon here, uh, these are not, you know, we wanna try and, um, and keep this as um, squares as much as possible or at quartz at least, so that we can, um, so, we, that, so that it gets easier to subdivide the model, basically. Uh, but we shouldn't worry about the result right now. So for the next part, I kind of want to try and divide the object into the different kinds of materials here, uh, mostly because it has this kind of lip on the bottom and the front. So if I take this edge again and press Alt-R for the ring select, and then I can use Connect to create a connected edge all the way around. I can move it down with uh, on the Z axis to where roughly I think it needs to be. And see, it has this higher, uh, it has this flat area. So I kind of need to have two here. Um, to do that, I can use chamfer if I wanted to. So I can press um, chamfer, then decrease the size to maybe something like this, and also take my chamfer edge segments to zero in this case, because we're using uniform chamfer, and that'll create just two edges. Great, so this will allow me to take the bottom polygon and then scaling this in just a little bit. If I wanted to move these, I can go to vertex, look at it from the side and take it down just a little bit. And then roughly we have what we need. Now, I haven't created this lip yet, um, but I'm gonna do that in just a second. So on the top, we have the same kind of deal. We need to create an edge all the way around. We can either use, use connect like we just did, or we can use swift loop. The hotkey for that is Alt-1. Uh, as soon as we do that, it'll show up, depending on where we are we are holding the mouse, um, it'll show us where it's gonna do a connect all the way around uh, and do a loop. 
So I'll press left mouse button once and it'll create this edge loop right here. Now I can take all of the polygons all the way around. And by the way, if your polygons aren't uh, lighting up like mine are, you can press F2 on your keyboard and that'll maybe help your, uh, your issue here. So I'll take this selection and extrude my selection. And this looks like, yeah, very wrong. Um, I kind of want to extrude it a little bit inward, not too much, but probably, you know, maybe half a centimeter or something like that is probably too much. But instead of doing it as a group, I want to do it out of the local normal for each polygon. This means they will all go inwards or outwards together. Uh, but instead of as a group, uh, we'll figure out how much, maybe 0.1 minus 0.1 of a centimeter. Say OK to that. And now we have this small lip. It might be a little bit too much, but you know, for this is fine. Um, so now that we have that solved, we kind of want to um, make sure that um, that we do this top part. Top part is a little bit different than most uh, than the rest of it because it has this f fine little edge around and it has this, a more intricate um, form. So to begin with, I kind of want to make a, because it's it's rounded all the way around. I don't want this flat polygon here. So I'll create I'll select all of my edges all the way around on this edge side and do a connect and do the same for the other side here. Make sure that we're not selecting something that we don't want. Press connect again. And now, yeah, see, let's just do this properly. That press connect again. So now that we have this cross around, we might want to go to top view, so T, and take these vertices. So one to select the vertices and then scale it just a little bit so that it gets rounded just a little bit. So it doesn't become too flat here, basically. So just scaling them out. Um, I realized that I've scaled mine on maybe the different axes. So I'll go to the same selection again and make sure that we're doing it outwards just a little bit like that. So I'm only doing it on the Y and X. So I don't do it on the Z axis as well um, by accident. All right, so now that we have that sort, part sorted, we have these polygons here. We can select these polygons on the top and do an inset. Um, this inset will help us to um, create the first kind of lip that we have out here. So we need to figure out how much we kind of want to do that. Press OK. And after that, I wanted to create this middle part. So this part coming out right here. There are many ways that we can do this, but the main way I'm going to do this is select this whole loop um, by just double clicking the edge. We can use chamfer and then up our segments to free. So we keep the middle edge down there um, and then figuring out how much we kind of want to do this. And I think something maybe 1.2 or something like that and press OK to that. So now we have this part here, which needs to be elevated the same as the edge here. So I can select these edges here and I can hold shift and move our on, Z, on the Z axis down a little bit and then I can scale it inwards just a little bit like that. This will still mess up this part a little bit. So I'll be moving that. Same goes with here. I'll be moving that a little bit and the same maybe with these two just to so they don't go inwards like they did before. Now I don't know exactly how much I actually need to do this, um, but if I needed to fix it a little bit more, I could maybe do something like this. Um, and then just, you know, move your edges a little bit around. There's probably a faster way than what I just ended up doing here, but it's fine. All right, so after that, we kind of need to distribute our uh, chamfer edges around and tell 3ds Max or our Turbosmooth modifier what needs to be 
um, sharp edges and what needs to be um, soft edges. So when our turbo smooth is applied, it doesn't mess up our model. You can see that on the different iterations, it'll um, kind of try and soften up everything. So to avoid this, we need to use uh, chamfers or do control edges. Um, and I'll be using the chamfer modifier for that um, so that it gets, you know, a lot better. But I'll um, save that for the next video. So stay tuned for when the next video comes out and I'll see you there. Bye.